Hello everyone. My name is Rahul. Welcome back to a new video in the Auto Fixture series. If you are new to Auto Fixture, check out my other videos on how to get started. In this video, we'll explore a bit more on mocks and how to use them in our tests. I have a customer controller here which uses a iCustomer repository to create a customer given a customer DTO. It does a simple check on if the photo is null or not and then decides to save the customer. Let's see how we can test this. So let's start with the theory attribute and add in the auto mock data that we created in the last video. To go over again, the auto mock data overrides the auto data attribute and injects in an auto mock customization. The auto mock customization replaces interfaces whenever it ceases with a mock implementation using the MOQ as a framework. So let's say public, a valid customer is saved. We definitely need the customer DTO. So let's ask that from auto fixture. That's the DTO. And we need a fixture to use the mocks. So we'll say fixture. To create a mock repository, we need to use the MOQ API, which is the MOQ CK class and say, I need an iCustomer repository. We can inject this into the iFixture. So using fixture.inject and say mock repo dot object. So this injects in and locks the iCustomer repository. To create the SUT, you can ask fixture.create and ask it a customer controller. So when the customer controller is created, it uses this mock implementation of the repository. Let's exercise the SUT and say create customer and pass in the DTO. So in this case, we expect the mock repo to be called once. So let's say mock repo dot verify a dot create. We don't mind what the customer is for now. So let's say it dot any customer and say we expect it to be called once. Let's run this test and it passes. Let's comment this out to make sure it's not a false positive. Run the test again and it fails as expected. We definitely don't want to repeat this logic in all of our tests. Let's see if we can make this any better. So definitely we need to remove the fixture for that and say, I need a customer controller and say SUT. There's no way now we can pass the mock object into that. We could try getting the mock repo from the controller because it's exposed as a property. So I could remove that and say SUT.repository but then that's an iCustomer repository and it's not a mock object. So we cannot run the verify calls on that. From this blog post, getting the mock from the mock object, there's a method which uses reflection to get back the mock object. Let's see if that helps us in any ways. So I'll use that in here, include the required using statements and use that method to get the mock repository. Get mock from object, repository and pass that in. Let's run the test again and it does pass. I quite don't like the way we'd use this reflection magic to get the mock object. And also this expects that the repository object is exposed as a get or on a public property. Let's see if we can make this any better. So let's get rid of this and let's get rid of this. So now what we want is a mock repository. So let's ask auto fixture for a mock repository. So I can say mock i customer repository and call that mock repo. Let's run this, but it fails. Auto fixture, every time it sees a request for an object or a type, it creates a new instance. So when we request for a mock of iCustomer repository, it creates a new instance for us, passes that in. When the customer controller asks for an iCustomer repository, it creates a new instance of mock and passes that in. Let's see how we can freeze this. So that's basically making it a singleton instance, just like in IOC containers. So we can say, hey fixture, just create one instance of iCustomer repository mock and use that from then on. To do that, decorate this with the attribute frozen from XUnit2. This tells auto fixture to freeze the instance of the mock and then use that whenever it's requested after it. Let's run the test and it passes. Note that the order of the frozen attribute is very important. Since in this case, the customer controller is after the frozen attribute, the same instance gets passed to the customer controller. If we were to push this down and run this test, it's going to fail. 
because customer controller requests for a customer repository first, which is not frozen, after which autofixture again creates a new instance and freezes that. But what we want is that it needs to be frozen first and use the same instance into the controller. So that's why the order in this is very important. So we need to make sure it comes on top and this one comes next. Let's remove the extra brackets and run the test again. And it passes. Hope this helps you to get started with the frozen attribute and use mocks in your tests. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to keep notified on further videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you.